Welcome back to my next episode of my Detroit Red Wings franchise mode. If you saw the last episode, you will know that our season is not going well in the slightest. So I'm going to give some of the young guns a chance at the end of the year, including Berggren on the second line, finally getting an opportunity, Soderblom on the top line, Casper back up even though he's been incredibly disappointing so far, Besser, Fabry, Haltun in line three, and then Reichel, McLeod, and Zadina line four. But on the defense, we're trying Broberg out in the top pair with Sider, White Cloud, Horonix, and Veterans on the second pairing, and then Topi Niemela finally draws in playing with Gustav Lindstrom. Kosa, even though I put him as a starter earlier, has not been getting many chances to start, so we'll see if that changes at the end of the season or not. So this season ended up incredibly disappointing. 32 wins, 42 losses, and eight overtime losses, so 32 and 50. Tied for last in the division with the Buffalo Sabres. The Toronto Maple Leafs win the President's Trophy. The Ducks, after all their big trades, are in third, so that's not too surprising. Six teams with 100 points. The Blackhawks rebuild is done. Rangers, Sharks, Golden Knights. Vancouver, we have their first round pick, so it's good to see them miss. Did Columbus miss? Columbus also missed. We have three lottery picks, so hopefully one of them ends up being the big winner. Though those two are likely to be in the middle. We finished 28th in the league. That's just lame. We were listed as buyers too. We were supposed to be such a great team and it just did not work out this season. In last place, we've got the Winnipeg Jets tied with Dallas actually. So we've got the fifth best odds, even though we have a three-way tie for third to last with 72 points. So hopefully we end up winning the lottery. So McKinnon, as always, came to play 76 points in 82 games. Raymond, 65, Larkin, 63, Soderblom, 59. All pretty good. Cider, 51 is solid. Then after that, we dropped off. Casper's a minus 22, really disappointing there. Besser only with 41. Really, the offense just didn't get the job done overall. Peronik was solid. Haltunen, 19 goals, 14 assists his rookie year. It's only a 77 though, so that's too bad. Not a terrible rookie year though. And there's the rest of the stats. Pause if you want to see. Igor Shesterkin was a massive disappointment after being a huge free agent signing. 26, 32, and 4 with an 8, 9, 6 save percentage. Pretty terrible. Definitely regretting that one after this year, but hopefully he rebounds in the following season. Kosa, I wanted him to get more games than that, but for whatever reason, the AI just keeps putting Chesterkin in. But 6, 10, and 4, the 900 save percentage isn't too great either. Austin Matthews scored 70 goals! Oh my goodness! He's still, he, I mean, you should be at 99 overall if you're scoring 70 goals. 113 points. Barzal, 112. Marner, Kairou. What's Kairou's over? 92. Wow. McDavid with 98, disappointing. Not very good player in real life, of course, as we all know. Like, I don't even think most people have heard of McDavid. Tervinen on the list at the end with 92. Rensfeld is that medium franchise guy. Jack Hughes, 91. Zegers, 87. Stars are performing. Not our stars, but other stars. Matthews with 79. Jamie Acoin, who is a medium elite 82 overall, second overall pick by the Islanders with 49 goals. That was a uh, decent pick, I suppose. Svechnikov, 48. Ovi still scoring at age 40, still a 91 overall. You'd love to see that. McDavid, Crosby. Is Crosby dropped off at all? Oh my goodness, Crosby's only an 84. Still producing like crazy, though. Orzal, 84 assists, leads the league. Kairou, Marner, Yamamoto, Huberdeau close behind. Then we got a couple defensemen in Fox and Hedman. Morgan Riley and Victor Hedman both with 72 points. Fox, Hughes. McAvoy with 69, hit <laughs> nice. 68, 68, 67. It's pretty close. I'm not quite sure who's gonna win the Norris. I'd personally pick Fox because he has 69 points. Like, how could you not pick him? Cal Peterson, 48 wins. Wow. Philly Huso, 41. He's on the Islanders now. Georgiev on the Capitals with 40, and Saros still with Nashville, also 40 wins. Some big winners there. John Gibson with a 917 save percentage, though. He might take home the Vesna. Merz Lakins, 914, really solid as well. Freddie Anderson, 912. I don't really know who's gonna win this one. Rookie skaters, a coin is running away with the caller. No one was even close to as good as him. Pinelli was solid, but he's only an 81 medium top six. Gamble, 83 medium elite. He was the first overall pick, so the Avalanche might screw it up right there because the coin looks a little bit better. Brendan Othman just made it. Wow, he's only an 80. I think he's going to be a great player in real life. The New York Islanders with their rookie coin are the Stanley Cup champions. And we unfortunately do not win the draft a lot. We will have the fifth overall pick, the 14th, and the 16th. So still, lots of selections is good. 
Patrice Bergeron finally calls it as an 86. Claude Giroux also an 84 overall. Corey Perry at the age of 41. Zach Parise, Logan Couture at age 37, 79 overall. Perron unfortunately didn't have any success with Columbus after that trade. Max Pacioretty's done, Zuccarello, Stahl, lots of really big names. Lucic, Gagne, Giordano, Ryan McDonough, Mark Edward Vlasic. Lots of big names retiring. The NHL is changing. Brian Elliott, the biggest name to retire with goaltenders. Thomas Grice, fairly big name as well, but nothing as close to his big names as the players. Mark Giordano and Matt Zuccarello are now coaches. Here's what the playoff tree looks like. McDavid almost got a cup, but not quite as the Islanders beat him. Islanders beat the Rangers in round one, so that is a big one. Toronto once again chokes in game seven in round one to the Flyers. Crosby's Penguins could not beat the Islanders. Edmonton swept San Jose. San Jose's been a good team in this sim. Chicago has also been a pretty good team in this sim. Anaheim made all those trade deadline acquisitions and then got crushed in the first round, so that's too bad for them. Matt Barzell went off in the playoffs, 27 points in, 22 games. Dreisaitl was good as well. Ryan Hartman was really good, that is surprising. Where is Connor McDavid? A coin was great, 15 goals. That man can put the puck in the net. Crosby was good. Where? Connor McDavid, 16 points in 19 games. No wonder they didn't win the cup. There's Vili Husso, our old goaltender, getting the job done, while our new one didn't even put up a 900 save percentage. Ouch. And here you see once again the Islanders are cup champs, presidents to Toronto, Clarence's Camel to Edmonton, and Prince of Wales to the New York Islanders. Matthews with the Art Ross, of course he got the heart with 70 goals. Norris to Riley, the Maple Leafs are cleaning up here, except of course the Stanley Cup because they are the Maple Leafs. Lady Bing to Barzal, a coin of course won the Calder, Barzal, Conn Smythe. Gibson did win the Vesna. he had the highest save percentage among starters, and the Jennings. Lausanne wins the Masterton, Joe Pavelski wins the Jack Adams, that is kind of awesome to see, that, that's really cool. The Selkie goes to Crosby. Matthews, Ted Lindsay, and Maurice Richard. So I was in the middle of this trade, trying to get Thomas Shabbat, and something horrible happened. My laptop died, and I just lost all the footage of the draft and all my contract signings and whatnot. So I'm just gonna go through them after we successfully get Thomas Shabbat. We did not successfully get Thomas Shabbat. Adding in a third, still rejected, wow. I'm throwing in Gibbons right here. He's a medium top six, our 16th overall pick from the previous draft. Throwing in a fourth back our way because we are giving up a lot of players for Thomas Shabbat here. Trade still rejected, wow. Take the fourth off. Look at the trade value, it's so far in favor of Ottawa. And they're still saying no. Trying with a third instead of Bergeron. Still rejected. My second round picks are very valuable, but gotta happen here. Trade accepted, Thomas Chabot, welcome to the Detroit Red Wings. So here's what the team is now looking like. Hal Tunin grew to a 79. We picked Zachary Volpatti, the 76 overall medium elite with the fifth overall pick. He's gonna be a stud for us for a long, long time, I think. We picked Maddox McClement, 62 overall medium elite with the 14th overall pick in the draft. Phenomenal value at that position, so I'm super excited. Marco Casper is up to an 86. Elmer Soderblom was really happy to see us up to an 87 on one of the best contracts in the NHL now. We took Vladimir Burmistrov, a 54 overall medium elite defenseman in the second round with the 37th overall pick, so that one was definitely a steal. And we took Brandon Goddard with the 16th overall pick in the first round, medium top six forward. Definitely a solid pick as well. Now this is the pick I wish I could show you because you probably think I cheesed my own rule. I promise you I didn't. The AI got this guy in the seventh round. He's an overager at age 19, a 53 overall low elite, Tommy Nidamaki. Pretty ridiculous pick by the AI. We signed Scott Reedy to a one year $1.4 million contract. He's an 82 overall. We signed Matthew Joseph. Matthew Joseph is also an 82 overall. Signed him for a one year deal making two million bucks. Billy Hay Nolo, we got super cheap. Medium top four defenseman, former first round pick. Got him for 800K. Zach Whitecloud is now only an 80 overall. He's not really worth that money anymore. And at the deadline, I was offered a first round pick for him. I really wish I took that deal. 
We signed Simone Holmstrom for the AHL 77 overall medium top six. Here's our goalie overall. Shesterkin dropped a little bit, but that's really all we did for the off season. The draft was phenomenal. I'm really, really happy with how that went. Free agency was solid as well. And that big trade for Shabbat, I think is gonna make us a playoff team next year. I'll sim to the start of the season and then we'll wrap this one up. I did try to offer sheet Kaden Gooley, who's an 80 overall medium top four, but Montreal has matched it. Here are some of the signings. Kaelin Addison to Buffalo is pretty big. Zemnis Gergensen finally leaves. Zucker went to Vancouver. Bjorkstrand, big deal to Dallas. Marchessault to Nashville. Stuart Skinner to Florida. JG Pajot to Colorado. Nyquist to Dallas. I can't believe I actually remembered to check this for, for once. I'm gonna say for lunch. I need food. Alex Tuck to Nashville. Nemesnikov, Ottawa. Any other big deals? Schwartz to Arizona. Poor guy. Kerfoot back to Colorado. Yusuf Alamaki back to Calgary. Kalorn, they wanted to stay with Columbus. Mikey D. Pietro to Tampa. Vetrano back to New York. Yuko Pekalukinen, who got traded, is now back on Buffalo. Rangers got Filipino. Markstrom, Vegas. Pew Suter, Vegas. Morgan Frost, Minnesota. Brad Marchand, and Jack Eichel. That's a big one. Jack Eichel to Washington, seven years. Kyle Connor, seven year deal with Philly. Tomas Rensfeld, that medium franchise guy, seven years with Chicago. Philip Broberg signed six years for Ottawa. Good for him getting that bag. Matt Murray to Calgary. Mario Ferraro to LA Kings. I don't really like that. Truba to Toronto. Why are you doing that to yourself? Truba Dermott to St. Louis. Oshie to Florida. Nichols Backstrom still going in this to Minnesota. John Carlson to Winnipeg. Washington fans, look away. Bergeron accepted his qualifying offer. If he grows, he actually might make the team. Vegas wants to give us Shea Theodore, but I am not getting rid of Volpatti. He's going to be one of the faces of this franchise. Vancouver is offering us Andrew Kopp, who wasn't that good for us, and Ilya Labushkin for Sebastian Kosa. Absolutely not. Ryan McLeod accepts his qualifying offer. So that'll do it for this episode. Sorry about the recording crashing. This is just going to be one long episode. But anyways, I hope you still enjoyed, and thank you so much for watching.